back or welcome if you are new. I am Angela and today I am bringing you another paranormal video and I did take a poll on YouTube the other day and a lot of you guys requested to see or voted the most for the topic of the real haunted doll Annabelle and the story behind all of this because it is something that is very hyped up in Hollywood. There's been two movies about it and there is a third movie coming out in the coming week. So I thought it would be really cool to talk about it. Plus, I think the real story is very, very interesting. So before we get into this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like my videos. If you are new here, I do do all things beauty and paranormal. So if you like that combination, then I would love for you to join our YouTube family. With that being said, a lot of you guys might know I am moving, so it's kind of chaotic here right now. And I did mention on some of my other social media platforms that I will be posting paranormal videos for the next coming weeks just because I have some of them pre-filmed so it is easier, it saves time, and they are easier to film and I just enjoy filming them much more than I do beauty videos, not that I don't enjoy beauty videos, but they're more enjoyable, they are easier to film, and I feel like you guys also like paranormal videos better, so just for the coming weeks until I get settled in my new place, I will be posting paranormal stuff consistently and I will start to add back in beauty and skincare and stuff like that because I love doing it. So I just wanted to let you guys know if you are here for the beauty side of things I'm not gonna stop doing that I'm just trying to get through this next month and get to my new place so with that being said let's go ahead and get into the real story of the haunted doll Annabelle so I might be looking at my notes from time to time I did take a lot of them I always like to make sure I am accurate so if you see me looking down every once in a while that is the purpose of that but I want to go ahead and start with the backstory of Annabelle and what actually happened. Actually, let's kind of start with what happened in the movie and then we're gonna talk about what happened in real life. So, if you have seen the Annabelle movies, obviously, as you guys know, Hollywood likes to hype things up and sensationalize things to keep people interested. And so, a lot of times, Hollywood will make movies based off of true events, but they will definitely twist things around and add things in there to make it more exciting or more scary when those things didn't actually happen. And that's what they actually did with Annabelle. So the movie did start out kind of accurate. If you go back and watch the first Annabelle movie, it starts out with two women sitting in their apartment scared and talking to these paranormal investigators about their fears about the doll and what it's been doing and that they're basically, you know, absolutely terrified of it. So that part is part is pretty much accurate and I will you will figure that out as we go into the real story, but after this one scene in the movie, it goes back and shows a couple in the year 1970, I believe Leave, and it shows a young man giving his young pregnant wife the Annabelle doll and I guess she's like a doll collector so she's been looking for this doll for a really long time so she's really happy and then unfortunately unfortunately later that night a satanic cult I guess breaks into their home and attacks the couple um, and it's two different people who break in and attack her and one of the attackers is someone by the name of Annabelle Higgins and she ends up killing herself in their baby nursery in their home while holding the animal doll close to her. And then it closes up and shows her blood drip down into the eye of the Annabelle porcelain doll, therefore showing how Annabelle went from just being a normal doll to being a possessed uh, evil entity. And that's how she got the name Annabelle in the movie. But that is not actually what happened in real life. So to start, Annabelle was portrayed in the movies as a very, very, very creepy looking porcelain doll. And in real life, she actually was a, a Raggedy Ann doll. And what happened was a mother in, the, in 1970 bought this Raggedy Ann doll for her daughter for her birthday, who was named Donna. And at the time, Donna was a nursing student and she was living in a small apartment with her friend Angie, who was also a nurse. And at first, both of the girls really, really loved the doll and Donna initially kept it on her bed as a decoration. But it wasn't very long before both Donna and Angie started to be very, very creeped out by the doll and started to notice some weird things were starting to occur within their apartment, you know, around the time that they got this doll. So it started out really, really small. They noticed that the doll was moving and at, at first it was just like small little movements, like maybe a change in the position of the doll. But as weeks went on, the movements became more and more. And eventually as both the girls would come home from work or school, they would notice that the doll was in a completely different room than they had left the doll in. 
and they would even find the doll with her arms crossed or her legs crossed and even the creepiest part according to some of the articles that I read is that they would actually find her standing upright and whew, that gives me the chills just talking about it. Obviously this started to really freak Donna out so she stopped keeping the doll on her bed like she did in the beginning and she started leaving it on the couch before she left for work but when she would come home it would be back in her room on her bed with the door closed. There was also a point where Donna and Angie would find written messages in their apartment and obviously they assumed it was from the doll and they would find these written messages written on parchment paper saying things like help us or help Lou and Lou is one of their friends who are we going to talk about in a second but they were just very creeped out by this fact because the handwriting looked like a child's handwriting and according to them they didn't even keep parchment paper in their apartment so they were very freaked out and had you know no idea where could how could this have happened where would the parchment paper have even come from so the last straw for Donna when she became actually really scared is when she closely inspected this doll and she noticed that there were drops of blood on the back of the doll's hands and on her chest area that weren't there before obviously that would really freak anybody out so at this point Donna and Angie felt like they needed to seek expert advice so they reached out to a medium and this medium had them do a seance to kind of like contact whatever spirit was you know possessing this doll or you know trying to get in contact with them so during the seance they came in contact with a spirit who said they were a little girl by the name of annabelle higgins and she explained to the girls or communicated with the girls that she had actually lived on that property that the apartment was built on before the apartments were built when she was seven she was found dead on that field that the property was built on prior to the apartment being there and basically she just told the girls that you know she felt comfortable with them she felt comfort being there with them and she was lonely and she wanted permission to be able to reside inside the doll so that she could stay with them and not be lonely and basically these two girls felt really bad for this ghost named Annabelle Higgins and they thought you know she's seven years old she died at a really young age and she's just lonely and she wants someone to kind of like take care of her and be you know be around people so they gave her permission to reside inside of this doll. But unfortunately, this was not a good move. As a lot of you know, it's the same kind of thing with a Ouija board. When you are talking to spirits, you never know who is on the other side. You never know if they are manipulating you. They could be lying and saying that they are someone they are not, and that was the case with this. So they realized that Annabelle was really not who she said she was, and that she was actually an evil entity, and not a seven-year-old little girl ghost at all. So this is where Donna and Angie's friend Lou comes in that I mentioned very, very briefly in the beginning of the video. Basically, he had been friends with the girls for a long time. He was already part of their friend circle when they got the doll, and he always had a really bad feeling about this doll and was constantly telling them to get rid of it. But I mean, it was a birthday present from Donna's mom, and she felt like the little girl inside of it was she just felt bad for it so she she pretty much felt an emotional attachment to this doll and she was not ready to let it go but unfortunately their friend Lou did have negative experiences with Annabelle he reported that he was sleeping one night and he woke up unable to move it sounds kind of like sleep paralysis to me from what I read but he woke up felt like he couldn't move so he kind of like looked around the room in a panic and then when he looked down at his feet according to him Annabelle was crawling up his leg and I guess she pretty much strangled him and he blacked out and when he woke up in the morning he was very very scared and he was sure like he was sure that it was not a dream that it was something that really happened and that he was not making it up in his head another experience Lou had was when he was in Donna and Angie's apartment he heard noises like rustling around noises coming from Donna's room in the apartment and he was actually really scared because he thought that maybe somebody had broken in maybe somebody was in the apartment that wasn't supposed to be so he slowly and quietly made his way to Donna's room and I think, you know, he kept listening until the sound kind of like went down and then he opened the door and there was nobody in there. And the only thing he saw was the Annabelle doll that was kind of like thrown on the floor in the corner. While he was in there looking around, he felt like there was somebody behind him. And obviously when he turned around, 
there was nobody there. Then all of a sudden he was grabbing for his chest and kind of like doubled over in pain. He was cut and bleeding. And according to some of the articles that I read when he opened his shirt, there were seven distinct claw marks, three vertically and four horizontally, and they were all really hot like burns. And supposedly these scratches healed really, really fast. They were half gone by the next day and fully gone by day two, which is very, very creepy. So it was at this point that Donna finally started to realize that the spirit within the doll was not that of a seven-year-old little girl, but that it was something much darker and that they needed to, to seek another expert opinion. So basically, Donna and Angie went to a priest who eventually led them into getting into contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren. If you don't know who they are, Ed and Lorraine Warren are very, very famous paranormal investigators, and they have worked on a lot of paranormal cases, not just Annabelle, but cases that inspired movies like The Conjuring, Amityville Horror, and so on. So basically, Ed and Lorraine Warren you know, they talked to the girls, they were very concerned, and they believed that the doll was not actually possessed. So they told the girls that the spirit was pretty much manipulating the doll or using the doll to, to make the girls think that the doll was possessed because it was using that to gain their trust and get into their home and eventually possess one of them. So because that makes sense too, because it's not common, at least I don't think it really happens according to Ed and Lorraine Warren, you know, spirits, entities do not possess inanimate objects. They like to possess living things. That is their main goal, but they can definitely use inanimate objects to make you think that they're possessed or that that's pretty much how they make their way, weasel their way into your lives until they kind of get you where they want you and then they make their move, which is really, really scary. So at this point, the Warrens concluded that it would be best to do an exorcism type cleansing of the apartment of Donna and Angie's apartment and also to remove the doll from the apartment in order to prevent anything like this from happening there again. So that's exactly what they did. The Warrens ended up taking the Annabelle, the Raggedy Ann doll with them home and right away they started experiencing Experiencing negative things as they were driving home the car started swerving it started stalling and they even started experiencing brake failure and it wasn't until Ed turned around and I think spritz like holy water on the doll that the car issue stopped and they did make it home safely but things did not stop there very similar to Angie and Donna they experienced the same thing so you know Ed and Lorraine would come home and find the doll in different places in different you know rooms in the house in different positions and according to one of the articles I read they even found her levitating on several occasions so at this point they did have a Catholic exorcist come into the home and when he saw the doll he picked her up and he said you're just a rag doll Annabelle you can't hurt anyone and he tossed the doll back in the chair now Ed warned him not to taunt the doll and basically I don't think the priest I don't know if he didn't take it seriously but I guess he just really did not think anything bad would happen but Ed on numerous occasions from some of the articles that I read has had to warn people like hey don't disrespect the doll because you know bad things will happen and Ed and Lorraine Warren were very worried about him because of what he said to the doll and Lorraine was like, please be careful driving home. Please call us when you get home safely and let us know that you are okay. So unfortunately, a couple of hours later, he did call Lorraine and he let her know that he was in a very near fatal accident where he almost died. He got in an accident in a very, very busy intersection and his car was completely destroyed. So this was just one of many events that happened like this over the years. And at this point, Ed and Lorraine Warren did have a special glass case built for Annabelle to put in there and lock her inside and keep her in there because she was so dangerous. And that is where Annabelle is to this day. The Warrens started something called the Occult Museum. Like I said, the Warrens worked on various paranormal cases that inspired a lot of Hollywood movies like Amityville Horror, Haunting in Connecticut, um, you know, Annabelle, obviously. And throughout these cases, they took a lot of different paranormal or haunted objects home with them to be able to protect them from the public. And over time, they accumulated so many objects that the occult museum was born. And so they kept all of these objects in the basement of their home, and it eventually became a place where people could go and visit and tour and see all of these, you know, you know, most haunted objects like Annabelle and 
I'd have to look up what else is in the museum. I know that there are supposed to be some pretty terrifying objects in there that you can go see, but that is how the museum itself was born. So getting back to the story of Annabelle, there was this young couple, which this story is very well known if you're familiar with Annabelle. But basically what happened was a young man and a young woman, they were a couple, they were together, and they came to see Annabelle on their motorcycle. So they drove there on his motorcycle and they were in the museum and I guess he started banging, you know, on the glass case that Annabelle was in and he was telling her, you know, hey, if you can leave scratches on people, I want you to scratch me. So basically like taunting her, yelling at her, trying to get her to prove that all of these, you know, rumors and things and hauntings were true and he wanted her to basically physically harm him to give him some sort of proof that she was legit. And Ed overheard this, he got very upset, he told them they had to leave and he threw them out. Now, unfortunately, obviously they left and while they were riding away on their motorcycle, according to the girlfriend, they were both laughing and making fun of the doll and then they lost control of the bike and they went head on into a tree and the boyfriend did die instantly. She survived, but she was hospitalized, I think for an entire year. So she had some pretty severe injuries. So I, I couldn't find specifically other instances that happened like that, but I did read in multiple articles that there are various incidents where this happened. If you've taunted the doll, if you taunted Annabelle, something bad or dangerous did happen where either the person died or had a near-death experience. So that is pretty creepy. So that is the basic backstory of the haunted doll Annabelle and how it all came to be and what inspired the movies. And unfortunately, the Warrens have since passed. Both Ed and Lorraine Warren passed. I believe Ed Warren passed in 2017. Don't quote me on that. I believe that's what I remember seeing from the article that I read. And I think Lorraine just passed away this past April. So both of them have both passed on. And the Occult Museum is still there. It's actually in Connecticut but it's temporarily closed, I believe. I found some articles that said it's permanently closed, but when you go to the actual website, it says it is temporarily closed, I guess for zoning laws or whatever. So they're looking for a new location to have the museum at so that they can reopen it and start doing tours again, I believe, at least according to the website that I saw. But that is where the famous haunted doll Annabelle still resides in her glass case. If you go look online, you can see pictures of people, I believe celebrities that have gone and visited who are taking like photos and selfies with her. So it is a very, very popular attraction. And I, I don't know, would you guys go visit the Occult Museum if it reopened? I think it's something that I would want to go see, but also I would be very, very terrified. Just the fact knowing that if you say anything that could remotely rub Annabelle the wrong way, that something that terrifying could happen to you, even when you, once you've left the property, it's actually quite terrifying. So, you know, the paranormal obsession side of me would be like, yeah, I totally want to go. But then there's a side of me that's like, maybe that's too far. Maybe don't do that. I don't know. I would love to hear in the comments if that's something that you guys would go see, or if you guys have gone before it did close, I would love to hear about your experiences. And that's pretty much all I have for you today. I really hope that you enjoyed this story. Hopefully it gets you in the mood to go out and see the movie and now you can kind of compare the real story to you know the sensationalized stuff in Hollywood but it's still kind of creepy and kind of cool to know that this movie or these movies are based off an actual haunted doll named Annabelle so if you guys have any questions please comment below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and as always I will see you guys next week bye